rather an interesting development, sir. My general says there is no point in continuing this fighting. He is willing to discuss a surrender. Tell him to go to hell. Sorry! What? Was there anything else? What's up, guys? Your boy Penny. There are some things you look forward to for years and years. Christmas morning with your children, your team winning the Super Bowl, the opportunity to get that great promotion, and the chance to once again see every single live in America burst into tears in a hysterical, manic meltdown over President Trump winning. And we are at the precipice of seeing that again. The last time Donald Trump won, we were delivered on a golden platter memes that will live forever, like the screaming lib meme here. But there are a lot of videos of libs bursting into salty, delicious gumdrop tears at Hillary Clinton's election night party, victory party, <laughs> and in the corresponding days after. And I want that to happen again. Ladies and gentlemen, we're excited about it. One of the places where the production quality of the left is so high that it really becomes quite hysterical to watch them mourn Hillary Clinton's loss is Saturday Night Live. Saturday Night Live, uh, re a reminder, in response to Donald Trump winning, they didn't make a joke. They were literally truly affected by this and had Kate McKinnon come out addressed as Hillary Clinton singing hallelujah on a piano and then de delivering some mealy mouth messages. It's, it's like me total mask off moment is that we are propaganda for Hillary Clinton. We are literally in pain right now. It's, 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 it has zero self-awareness, zero understanding of like, this is exactly the attitude as to why Trump won. And they're doing it all over again. I'm excited to tell you, here we go. I did my best, it wasn't much. I couldn't feel, so I tried to touch. I couldn't feel, so I tried to touch. She, she, don't, don't apply that line to Bill Clinton, by the way. So she she sings she sings Hallelujah, and she does not ha not have a great voice. So it it just kind of works. Hallelujah, <sighs> hallelujah. I mean, a plus because this is what Hillary Clinton would sound like. I'm not giving up, and neither should you. <laughs> and live from New York at Saturday night. <laughs> It's all, this is almost, this is almost better. It's almost better than the, it's almost better than the screaming lib in a way based on its pure production value. And the fact that people thought about this, we all know how it ended last time. Okay. So they're, they're setting themselves up to do this with Kamala. What is Kamala Harris? What is Kamala Harris going to sing? WAP? Like what, what is Kamala Harris going to sing when she loses? <laughs> Kamala Harris picks Saturday Night Live over Rogan Harris in NYC to make appearance on Saturday Night Live. That's right. So Kamala Harris went on Saturday Night Live last night for like a couple seconds. It was extreme cringe. It might have also been illegal. This clear and blatant effort to evade FCC's equal time rule, says Brendan Carr. The purpose of the rule is to avoid exactly this type of biased and partisan conduct. A licensed broadcaster using the public airwaves to exert its influence over the election and candidate on the evil of the election. Unless the broadcaster offered equal time to other qualifying campaigns. So Brennan Carr saying that they must offer Donald Trump an opportunity to be on Saturday Night Live. And lo and behold, Kamala Harris stole Donald Trump's sketch. Donald Trump did a sketch pretty famously uh, with Jimmy Fallon where he was Donald Trump in the mirror in sort of a private moment in a dressing room. And Kamala Harris did the exact same thing. Even her SNL skit, skitch was plagiarized. Okay, here we go. Here's the extremely cringe SNL sketch. And by the way, I'll play you as a precursor here. See if, see if you can spot some similarities between Donald Trump's sketch uh, right here. Thank you. I'm about, I'm about to go out for my interview with Jimmy Fallon. I'll call you back after I comb my hair. Talk to you in three hours. Wow, I look fantastic. I'm 
No, we look fantastic, and I mean really fantastic. Okay, so th th then this goes on, you know, this is the, the bit, right? It goes on and on, and Donald Trump has a conversation with himself. Okay, uh, again, see, see, if you can, see if you can spot some similarities w with this sketch and known plagiarist Kamala Harris, uh, what she did last night. <laughs> wow, well, this is it. The last campaign stop in Pennsylvania. Gosh, I just, I wish I could talk to someone who's been in my shoes, you know? A black South Asian woman running for president. Preferably from the Bay Area. Are you kidding me? It's the exact same sketch. It's the same sketch. Come on, can't help it. Tackle. Do the tackle. You and me both, sister. <laughs> you Kamala it is nice to see you Kamala and I'm just here to remind you you got this because you can do something your opponent cannot do you can open doors I see what you did there like to a garbage truck right <laughs> I don't really laugh like that do I oh, a little bit now Kamala take my Pamela <laughs> The American people want to stop the chaos and end the drama <laughs> with a cool new step mamala. <laughs> Kick back in our pajamas and watch a rom kamala. Like legally blondela. <laughs> and start decorating for Christmas. Follow la la la. <laughs> because what do we always say? Keep Kamala and, and carry on a la. <laughs> We even finish each other's belief in the promise of America. <laughs> now come on, let's bring it in. I gotta tell myself something over here. Come here. <laughs> I wanna tell you something. I'm gonna vote for us. <laughs> Great. Any chance you are registered in Pennsylvania? <laughs> nope, I am not. <laughs> well, it was worth a shot. NBC risked their FCC license so that Kamala Harris could do a cringe-inducing skit talking to herself that is a plagiarized Donald Trump skit that, sketch, sketch that Donald Trump did better. Will it help her or hurt her? Well, I think that everybody's made up their mind. I think that's, a, that's the difference here. And I think that this, this is all a cringe cope based on the fact that they know that they are losing. And they are pulling out every single psyop in the book in order to try and bend the edges, all right, on election day. I think that's, that is precisely what is happening. They know also that they have lost on the cultural grounds. That's why they have to manufacture a sketch with Kamala Harris, but they don't need to with Donald Trump. With Donald Trump, they just have Trump in an iconic orange vest. On Saturday. Well, we're almost at election day. <laughs> the fraud has already begun. They've only got it from people on my side so far, but that's okay, because they got the big vest on, right? <laughs> Look good, right? You like it? You might have seen me wearing it in garbage truck. <laughs> And I look like one of those airport guys just doing the lightsabers. <laughs> What's that guy doing? United this way. <laughs> we'll be looking into that very strongly. We're going to find out what those are called. We'll look at that. <laughs> but they're telling lies about me, okay? I never said I wanted Liz Cheney to be shot in the face, okay? <laughs> just said I wanted her to go hunting with her dad, all right? <laughs> it's freaking, freaking hilarious. It's actually really funny. And you can totally see Trump doing this. Unlike, Kam unlike, unlike the Kamala Harris bit, which is... Remind you. Deriv ...derivative of a Donald Trump sketch, which is the entire sketch isn't self-deprecating at all. It doesn't involve any well-written jokes. It just involves like, people talking about Kamala Harris's name. And it doesn't involve Kamala Harris saying more than 12... Uh, words, and none of them comedically land. They just like they just like depend on the presence of Kamala Harris there being the joke. The fact that the Kamala Harris is in the mirror is the joke. That's it. 
There's nothing inherently funny or interesting. And she even talks over her laugh lines. And then she cackles. Like Maya Rudolph is like trying to save her, I think. Yeah. Well, at least SNL has decided to go uh, all in on another character from the Democrat Party. So there's one person you're still allowed to make fun of <laughs> this election cycle as they illegally, criminally do an advertisement for Kamala Harris. And that's Joe Biden. Hey there. It's me. No Joe. Oh, Joe Biden, thank you for coming here to support me. Of course. My train was stopping here. So I'm being serious right now. <laughs> It's good to be back on my home turf. Guess what? As you know, I'm from the part of Pennsylvania that is a part of the state of Delaware. Well, Joe, thank you so much for all you've done for my campaign. I can still do more. I can get out there and I can say more things. Thank you so much for all you've done for my campaign. All right, kid. All right, I get it. Come on. Let's get real. I'm proud of you. You've got nothing to worry about. Come on. Thanks, Joe. All right. You know what? I saw a bunch of reporters and cameras out there. I'm going to go riff. <laughs> so... They're in on the joke. They're 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 in on the joke that Joe Biden is a massive liability and that Kamala Harris is a fake candidate. They know it. It's just a massive Saturday Night Live is just a massive therapy session for mentally disturbed, uh, broken libs who are going to have that therapy session uh, very publicly when President Trump wins, ladies and gentlemen. And it's <laughs> I can't wait to see what this sketch is going to be this time around. <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah. The cringe never ceases. It, uh, they, they can't help themselves. They had to do one final Kamala Harris out. They can't help themselves, right? Their careers literally depend on it. It's your boy, Benny. Like, share, and subscribe. Make SNL cry. See you.